Good afternoon. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us here on Facebook Live, uh, coming to you from Henry Mayo Newhall Hospital. Uh, again, I'm Dr. Larry Kidd, Chief Clinical Officer here at the hospital. And again, uh, Dr. Bud Lawrence uh, is here with me, our uh, Chief of the uh, Emergency Department here at the hospital. And we'll be answering uh, some of your questions today, as well as providing a few updates. Uh, on Monday, uh, I mentioned that there are a number of individuals. It takes a village to take care of patients here at our hospital. Uh, there were some support departments that I mentioned. There are a couple of others today that I'd like to uh, recognize in terms of their role here at the hospital. Uh, one is the Disaster Response Center, and we have individuals that work in that department. Typically, they are helping us prepare for disasters, such as if we have fire or earthquake or those kinds of disasters in our area. But most recently with the COVID-19, situation they have been intimately involved in terms of helping us to secure supplies that are required to take care of our patients. Uh, the PPE uh, that you hear about oftentimes, they are the individuals working with others to make sure we have what is needed to take care of patients. The other group is our central supply team. Central supply basically supplies orders all of the equipment and supplies generally that we need to take care of patients here at the hospital. But more importantly, most recently, because of the unique types of supplies that we need to take care of COVID patients, they're in the process of constantly searching, even sometimes across the country to make sure we have an adequate supply in the pipeline of those things that are required to take care of this patient population. Uh, so night and day, they're at work uh, helping to secure those items. And to this point, we've uh, been very successful in securing what uh, the staff needs. So we, we thank those two areas, as well as many others in the hospital that are constantly working to uh, ensure we have what's needed. Uh, just one other uh, highlight uh, you may have seen on uh, media, uh, newspaper, um, on our Facebook um, webpage, you may have seen that we are starting to discharge uh, some of our COVID patients from the hospital. And most recently, yesterday, we celebrated uh, one particular patient that had been with us for some time. Uh, that individual uh, was able to be discharged from the hospital on yesterday, uh, made a really good recovery, and was able to reunite uh, in his home with his family. So we're very pleased to see some of our patients now being able to uh, get back to their homes uh, and uh, uh, to have seen that they've, they've had a good recovery is uh, very exciting. Uh, the whole team is uh, just really jazzed about uh, seeing some of these patients <clears throat> improve and be able to leave. So uh, we're, we're very, very excited about that. Uh, I'll pitch it to Dr. Lawrence. Thank you, Larry. So um, once again, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, please leave your questions in the comment field. Uh, so a couple of things, Larry just discussed um, this patient that was discharged and um, we love to celebrate uh, those kinds of moments. It gives me chills and uh, you know, humbled to be part of a care team that this entire hospital does to do such great work taking care of these patients. Um, people have asked questions about um, how many people uh, have, have we seen that have recovered so far and um, any new cases and wanting to kind of know what the numbers are, uh, some hard numbers. So uh, we, we, I think we uh, are fairly transparent about that. We do disclose the numbers of uh, positives, for example, um, just so everyone knows kind of at this moment in time of all the people that we've tested, which is a little short of maybe 500 patients that we've tested. Again, these are higher risk patients. Uh, we've had about 95 patients that are positive, that we've had a positive result on. Um, again, like I said before, most of those patients have been discharged home and, uh, and have recovered nicely at home. Uh, from the hospital, we've actually discharged 13 patients who required admission to the hospital. And remember when you look at how the numbers pan out, 80% of people are going to have no issue, uh, their mild course of illness, about 15% of positive patients uh, require hospitalization and 5% uh, on, on the whole would require intensive care in the hospital. So of that 15%, uh, which is a small slice of the pie, we've already discharged 
13 uh, patients. And I, I think it's important to know that when you look at the experiences in places like New York and Italy, places where it's, it's crazy and uh, they don't have enough ventilators and all these, all these uh, restraints that they have, I would say that I, I feel that our care team is doing an, uh, an outstanding job. We're able to, we're not under duress. So we're able to pl apply all of our resources in a very meaningful way to really make sure that those patients are getting every bit of care that might improve uh, their outcome. And I think that in the end, we won't know until we see the data, but I do feel that, uh, that we will likely have uh, better outcomes here at Henry Mayo and other places in California that aren't under duress uh, than perhaps other places in the country like New York may have. Right, and I certainly would agree with that. Um, and, and to that extent, uh, again, seeing uh, some of our patients recover and uh, be able to go home is, is just very exciting. Uh, teams amazing. are doing an amazing job in, in the care of these patients. Uh, there's a question uh, that was presented related to uh, what were our thoughts around the, the inability for patients to have visitors during this, this time, given that uh, having loved ones uh, with patients during a uh, time when they're, they're very ill is very important. Uh, impacts mental health, that sort of thing. Uh, certainly, uh, that is um, having a bearing in terms of uh, challenges for loved ones that want to be at the hospital. We do have the restriction in place for visitors, and as a result, um, that is in fact uh, weighing the pros and cons of visitation. And certainly, with this virus, the um, the risk uh, of having visitors come. Uh, it certainly outweighs um, what the potential is. Should an individual present who doesn't know they're infected, it could be harmful for the patient. It could also be, uh, again, uh, risky for the individual who might be visiting uh, in that uh, they could potentially uh, contract or come in contact with individuals. Uh, we do have a number of things that uh, we have set up in order to uh, supplement uh, some of that contact. So for example, we have uh, the use, we encourage uh, Skype, uh, FaceTime, we have um, uh, iPads that are made available so that uh, patients can uh, contact through uh, electronic media with their loved ones, that sort of thing, as well as uh, keep in mind their care caregivers uh, with the patients around the clock. Uh, the nurses, uh, for example, provide 24-7 care, and in some ways, not only are our staff uh, caregivers and clinical experts in taking care of patients, but they become somewhat of surrogate family members for these patients as well. Uh, so there is someone uh, with the patients uh, pretty on a constant basis uh, helping to uh, address their needs, uh, express their thoughts, uh, ease some of the anxiety that they have around being ill with the virus, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, certainly uh, we do recognize that that is a, a gap when family members and loved ones can't be close to patients. Uh, but of course, our goal is to get them back to that point which they will be able to reunite with their family members uh, once again and that all will be healthy and able to enjoy uh, their regular routine in short order. Absolutely, I, I can't emphasize that enough how important it is to leverage technology right now in this time. Um, there's a lot of great technology out there. Uh, Dr. Kidd brought up many options and I think that uh, we, we have to kind of lean on that uh, to help get us through uh, for our patients. Um, two questions here that are also uh, kind of tied together. Um, what percentage of local patients need to be intubated? And does Henry Mayo consider newer treatment methods being used in other states or countries, like not intubating and new medications. So um, it is very hard to say what the actual percentages of patients that we intubate here at Henry Mayo uh, compared to the whole population of COVID-19 uh, patients. And the reason is, as with all of this data, is that we, we don't know the total number of people who have COVID-19. Many patients, I said many times, have had a mild course of illness they may not have looked to get testing. Some patients may have sought testing, but were just it was felt that it was very likely they had COVID-19, just go home 
and, uh, and home quarantine, which is very appropriate. Uh, so when you look at the actual data of positive tests, it's very hard to extrapolate that out to, to get a percentage for how many people we innovate. We only innovate patients that require innovation. Um, that's very clear, uh, is that we, we wanna make sure uh, we're giving a patient a chance uh, prior to intubation, but it is a very useful tool and it's something that uh, is absolutely life-saving uh, in, in many instances. So in looking at newer methods of, uh, that other countries and states are using, absolutely. You have to understand that, that this is a continuously evolving scenario and, uh, and most of what we do uh, usually in medicine is driven by data, is driven by studies, peer-reviewed studies that are all give us lots of great information on the, the absolute appropriate pathway to take. That doesn't exist right now with COVID-19. Everything is moving and evolving so quickly that we really have to rely on the experiential uh, uh, value of what other people have, what, what they've gone through, what they've seen, what they've felt has worked well. And we are incorporating all of that into what we do here. Uh, we, we have great collaboration between our emergency department, our intensive care and lung specialists, uh, and, our, and all of our physicians and care team in order to provide the best care, the most appropriate care. I don't wanna say cutting edge because we sometimes things have to pivot to make sure we're heading in the right direction, but we're incorporating everything that we can get internationally to make the best decisions for our patients and hopefully get the best outcomes. Right, um, very good. And oftentimes, as Dr. Uh, Lawrence indicate, uh, we are looking at the science as there's new developments around the treatment of these patients. Uh, not a lot is known, not a lot of data, but as new uh, information comes in, we're always looking to uh, implement uh, the, the best uh, for our patients. Uh, there was a question uh, that came in regarding the capacity uh, of the hospital to take care of COVID patients. Uh, previously, we've mentioned the fact that we opened our, our brand new six-story tower uh, at the end of last year. As a result of that, plus the existing units that were already uh, in play at the hospital, we have pretty good flexibility to take care of COVID patients. So for example, we can take units within our hospital and convert them to the level of care that's needed. So we have some COVID patients that have very minimal kinds of needs. They uh, are stable patients and their hospital stay potential is gonna be a short one, uh, all the way to patients who are critically ill and they require intensive care uh, level uh, of care. And those are patients that are often on ventilators, that sort of thing. So we have units that can take care of any level of care uh, we have the ability to take on a, a number of additional patients if that were required. Uh, as we see patients now starting to be discharged, uh, of course that creates additional space uh, for uh, uh, patients to uh, come in to those available beds. And uh, currently we're well staffed to be able to take care of those patients, as well as a, a quick reminder that for any other needs, medical needs, we're still open. Our emergency room is available uh, for the patients that are having acute illness, heart attack, stroke, whatever the case might be, uh, we are here staffed for all patients, COVID and otherwise. Yeah, please let us help you if you need our help. We're here, uh, and we say this almost every time that we're your community hospital. Uh, we do a very great job of cohorting COVID versus non-COVID patients. It's uh, it's a a place to come and get your care. We're here for you. Um, and uh, we just want to let you know that uh, we're very thankful again for everyone staying at home and doing your part. Uh, leave your comments in the comment field so we can attack those questions next time. I want to thank you so much for tuning in and giving us the opportunity to share uh, our experiences here at Henry Mayo with you at home. And uh, I want you to be safe, be well. Larry? Well, again, just uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we certainly uh, appreciate the questions, keep uh, forwarding those to us, uh, and we hope that these sessions are beneficial to you, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you again soon. Take care, be safe.